What up, YouTube? You already know Big Lou tapping back in with what it do with Big Lou and MZR2. Uh, so last night I dropped a video on the Kevin Durant trade, and this one is a day late, but it's uh Kyrie Irving was dealt to the Dallas Mavericks joining Luka Don Luka Donich, uh, who last night in the Kevin Durant video, I specifically stated that I believe that the three top players in the NBA are Giannis, the Greek freak, KD, and Luka. Not in that specific order, any three order, but those three guys are the top guys in the league, I believe. But I also named Jason Tatum. LeBron's always there. Uh, uh, Booker when he's healthy. Trey Young. Um, Damian Lillard when he's healthy. Of course, Steph's still there. You know what I'm saying? Steph probably has... I would say Steph probably has another two or uh, another three or four years. He's always going to be dangerous because he can shoot. You know what I mean? But uh, I think uh, Steph is going to be a, a, at the top of his game for another three or four years at least, I would say. Uh, but then again, you got to keep in mind, he's a smaller man. He gets hurt a lot because he's asked, you know, to do, he's got to do some big boy things at six foot two. You know what I'm saying? Um, but John Morant is another badass motherfucker. But uh, he's he's also a small guy, and he likes to take it to the rack and dunk. And he plays with, you know, he plays with force, which I believe is going to hurt him in the long run if he continues to play like that because your body can only take so much. So at some point, he's going to need to develop a jumper. You know, uh, uh, I mean, not develop a jumper, but uh, take his game more on the outside, more finesse, uh, you know, type player. You know, you can't be six foot three, six foot four, always going in on seven footers trying to dunk on him. You know what I mean? It just ain't going to work after a while. You're going to get hurt because you're going to land on somebody's foot, land on, you know, land awkward because you're taking off awkward off the uh, off the court, you know what I mean, off the floor. So, but anyways, Kyrie joined the, uh, the Dallas Mavericks, and last year the Warriors beat Dallas in the Western Conference Finals. So I understand Jalen Brunson left and went to the New York Knicks, but you're getting Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving is way... Way better player, I believe, uh, offensively wise, creative wise than Jalen Brunson. Not hating on Jalen Brunson; he's an NBA player. You know what I mean? So the 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 Brooklyn Nets uh, dealt, like I said, they dealt Kyrie Irving to the Dallas Mavericks, and the and the Brooklyn Nets got Dinwiddie and Dorian fin, Finney Fitz Smith and a future pick from twenty twenty nine, unprotected. Um, and then they already dealt Kevin Durant for Jay Crowder. Uh, Cam, Cam, and uh, another Cam Johnson, and another dude. I can't remember his name right now. So they picked up three guys there, and two guys from the Dallas trade. So that's five guys for two guys. So they doubled their 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 manpower. These are good role players. Uh, Dre Crow Jay Crowder's been around for uh, during the uh, Phoenix Sun success. Also, he was in Boston, and I think he was in New York, a uh, New York Nick too at one time. But I know he was in Boston during the. Uh, those years when uh, Isaiah Thomas was there, when J uh, Jason Tatum and them were youngsters, when they first in the rookie season, uh, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, uh, Rozier, who ended up going to Charlotte. Um, so you know, with these two trades, uh, with Brook, with Brook, with the Brooklyn Nets deal, dealing off uh, Durant to the West and Kyrie Irving to the West, has changed the the scheme of things as far as uh how the postseason is going to look. Uh, both teams, I believe, I believe Phoenix has a great chance of winning the championship. Like I mentioned last night, uh, KD's looking to grab his third chip, uh, his fifth uh, fifth appearance in the NBA Finals, I believe. Right, one with Dal uh, one with the uh, OKC, three with the Warriors, so that's four. And then he's looking to, you know, win his third chip, fifth appearance with the Phoenix Suns this year. And I think they got a good chance at it because just two years back they were in the finals. Uh, Last year they made it kind of they made it I think to the second round, um, I believe Dallas beat them. This year, uh, this year by this trade they were uh, eight plus eighteen hundred before the trade, and now after the trade they're like four eighty plus four eighty I think to win the championship. With Kyrie Irving joining, that's a two man wrecking crew on the Dallas Mavericks. Everybody knows what Luka can do, and we know what Kyrie can do, but Kyrie's got to stay focused on basketball. And not let none of the the off court uh, distractions and all the controversy he's been involved with the last couple of years. You know, if you go back just two seasons, man, you know, Brooklyn had uh, Brooklyn had uh, uh, James Harden, K 
KD and Kyrie Irving, and everybody thought they were going to win the championship, right? On top of that, they had DeAndre Jordan and Blake Griffin off the bench, two former All-Stars, uh, you know. So uh, fast forward, and now James Harden's in Philly. They bring Ben Simmons over there. Uh, James Harden is was willing to take less money uh, instead of the max in the offseason, you know what I mean, in order for them to get another piece or two, which they added, I think, P.J. Tucker, right? So that's a that's a team player move right there. He, he understands that he's not the player he was five years ago, and you know he can still help his team out with 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 facilitating the ball. And he can still score. He's just not at that level that thirty points a game no more. It's more like twenty points a game, twenty two maybe. Uh, the reason I'm I made sure to make these videos on KD and Kyrie because if you guys remember in the off season I was making a lot of videos about this because there was a lot of speculation and and uh, assume assumption that they were going to go to the Lakers. One of them was going to go to the Lakers and the other one was going to go here and there. And it was a lot of stuff in the news all the time about these two guys in the off season. They both decided they both were well, not decided because KD had a contract in place. And then Kyrie uh, also had one and he opted to stay in. Uh, so that's where we're at with that. So Brooklyn is obviously looking to rebuild. They just added five players to the roster, got rid of two, two high paid players, which also opens up. I'm pretty sure they still have a little bit of money opened up after trading for these guys because they just I, – I'm pretty sure how it works is they took over their contracts, the guys they traded for, and now Dallas took over Kyrie's big contract and KD's big contract in Phoenix. And then they got an unprotected uh, uh, draft pick in 2029. But then also you got to remember the James Harden trade, um, Brooklyn owes some uh, – I think Brooklyn owes some draft picks. Um, so that, that – when it comes to – I think I'm going to tip my hat off to Phoenix – the Phoenix GM, I think the front office did an excellent job landing Kevin Durant because, like I said already earlier in this video, and I said in the Kevin Durant video, Kevin Durant, I believe, is a top three NBA player. The height, 6'10", what he can do, nobody can do in the NBA because there's nobody like him that's at that height, those long arms, you know, can pull up over a seven-footer and, and pop pop a, a, dime, a you know pop a jumper right in their face, uh, dunk on people. You know, he could take it off the dribble. He could shoot from long range. Uh, he's the complete package. Uh, he can rebound when he has to. He can defend when he has to. You know, when he came to the Warriors, that's what we've seen. He, you've seen him, his rebounding go up. I think he started averaging about eight rebounds a game, and uh, he got like almost a block and a half a game. You know what I mean? So he has it in him to play defense. If he goes to a defensive coaching team, he's going to have to play defense, and we know he can. You know what I'm saying? He's still not, he's not that old. He only played one year in college. Uh, he came out at 19 years old in 2007 so that was what 16 years ago so he's in his 16th season 17th season now but he came out pretty much like uh, you know he just played one year of college so he should be about 35 now Durant and he's still playing top-notch basketball still averaging 27 28 29 points a game so um I think Phoenix landed it was a great deal for Phoenix um because keep in mind Chris Paul's time's ticking too right he's an OG um, he just passed Michael Jordan, I believe, for third all time in, in steals. And uh, so you know he he, he you know if, as, and then let me let me make this clear, because these players are injury prone. Every year Durant gets injured, he misses a few games. Chris Paul misses games, and I and from my understanding now, Devin Booker's been getting injured. So as long as those three guys can stay healthy, along with DeAndre Ayton, they got a great chance of winning the championship, in my opinion. Um, you know, KD can take a game over. We, we've seen that before. You know what I mean? Kyrie Irving can take a game over. The only thing is he comes with a lot more off-court crap, you know, and uh, he doesn't stay focused. But he's a hell of a talent. I, I honestly believe when he's on point, there's only – I would only put Steph Curry above him at the point guard position, uh, you know, dating back five years ago, you know. Um, so I believe those two guys – I believe both organizations did land a good deals. It's just that, you know, how's Kyrie going to play? Is, is him and Luca going to mix good well? Because I don't believe Luca's the type of leader that LeBron is. You know what I'm saying? But maybe not. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know much about Luca like that. You know, LeBron, we know he'll he'll speak up. He'll put cats in their place like Michael Jordan used to. You know, I don't know if Luca's that type of leader. But he's definitely the number one option on that Dallas Maverick team. And I think, I think uh, Kyrie playing like Kyrie can play that we know, I think he can accommodate Luca's game very well running the show at the point. Um, and uh, I think they made a good good decision too, bringing 
Kyrie in. I just hope that he can play basketball and, like I said, and, and, and leave all the rest out of it. Um, and uh, I'll be dropping a video shortly on uh, LeBron James's big, uh, big accomplishment. He just passed Kareem Abdul-Jabbar for the number one all-time leading scorer in regular season games. And he passed Kareem, I think, last year, the year before. No, I don't think it was last year. I think it was the year before that for all-time points in the, in the playoffs scored. So LeBron's definitely going down as one of the greatest NBA players of all time. I don't put him one and I don't put him two. I put him three. Um, But, you know, that's each his own. Each his own got their, you know, it's entitled to their opinion. Of course, the, the, the youngsters that are more from this era of basketball is going to put LeBron James number one. You know, that, that goes without saying. It's just natural to do that because you didn't really see – Kareem play. You didn't say Michael Jordan play. I got, I was, I, I was, I had the privilege to see them both play. Uh, you know, uh, Kareem didn't retire until 89 and Kareem set the record at 84. So that record almost stood 40 years before LeBron broke it. You know what I mean? And keep in mind too, LeBron has been, I don't want to get too much into LeBron, LeBron cause I, I want to leave that for another video, but I'll just say this in closing. LeBron's rookie season he averaged like 21 or 20 points, 20 points, 21 points a game. Ever since then, the next 18 seasons, he averaged at least 25, no less. And he came straight out of high school. Kareem, on the other hand, played three years at UCLA, won the championship every year he was there. And he played until he was 40 years old, I believe, uh, 69 to 89. And um, his last probably three or four, three seasons for sure, he was only averaging like 12 points, 10 points a game. You know, by then, you know, Magic was doing his thing at the high level. You had James Worthy. You know, Byron Scott came in a couple years before that. You had Michael Cooper, A.C. Green. You know, all these guys were produ uh, uh, were uh, chipping in on buckets and stuff. So Kareem didn't have to do as much, you know, by that time. So, you know, it just shows the at the level that LeBron James is playing. You know what I mean? And that uh, with that, I'm going to close this little video. I'm about to jump in the shower. As you guys can see, I need to shave. I'm going to give me a haircut today. And my son's coming. I got to go help him out do something. So with that being said, Big Lou, tapping on out, everybody.